Well, here we are as we are coming to the end of this week, and all week we've been talking about the issue of wisdom. If you missed the earlier episodes, you can find them uh, on, on our website, on, on, on my website, kenortiz.com. You can find them also uh, on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, they're, they're relatively short, although I have to admit this week I've kind of gone long on most of these. Um, but I think this is such an important topic because living wisely and, and acting wisely is such a critical aspect. In fact, the scriptures say that nothing will affect the trajectory of your life more decisively than whether you are following after the ways of wisdom, uh, which I also parallel with the idea of godliness or godlikeness in our life. Uh, that when we make those wise choices, life becomes much more rewarding and fulfilling. It, I do not want to suggest that it means you never have any problems or challenges, but you're not like somebody who is left bereft floating on the sea like some kind of shipwrecked person. Uh, there are many people, Paul even described as saying, they, they've made shipwreck of their life because they've disregarded the signs, uh, whether it's no, watch, not paying attention to the weather or the reports of the weather or uh, different seasons that they're in. They've just acted unwisely and they've ended up on the shoals battered and broken. Wisdom can keep you from unnecessary pain. And again, I don't say that we never have pain. Sometimes pain is part of learning wisdom, but it can keep you from unnecessarily painful pain in your life. Well, as we've talked about this, uh, we've looked at really a lot of the uh, things that wisdom is not. We've talked about the envy and, and ambition, selfish ambition and how that bitterness and pride come in and those things which take us away from the way of wisdom and lead us into really self-destructive behaviors. But in seven, verse 17, where he concludes the discussion about wisdom, he, he says to us, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, uh, then peace-loving, uh, it's considerate, it's submissive, it's full of mercy, full of good fruit, and impartial, and lastly, he says, it's sincere. Now, uh, what do those words mean? Because sometimes we kind of get uh, the wrong definition or wrong assumption of what he was saying. And this is always the challenge, I think, for the translators as they're trying to take it from the original Greek languages and put it into contemporary terminology that we use today. But like most words, they were much more nuanced than even our uh, understanding of them in the English translation. So let me break it down a little bit for you. The first of all, when he says that wisdom that's from heaven is pure, what it means is it's unadulterated. It doesn't mean it's perfect, but it means it is, doesn't have an admixture of motivations. And that's where I think that we have to begin by recognizing that uh, if my heart isn't right with God, and if I'm not being humble and submitted to God, then I have, there's an adulteration that's going on, a, a unnatural or unhealthy mixing together of you know, basically the word of God and selfish ambition. Uh, so the idea is that we really ask God, help me to have, be pure in my motives. And don't trust in yourself to de determine whether that's the case or not. I had a young man tell me once when I was addressing an issue in his life, he said, well, my motives are pure. And quite honestly, I didn't believe that was true because the effect of his actions were not good. And so that's one of the things we can always look at. What is the fruit of what's going on? That will tell me if my motives are pure or not. But you don't have to get it wrong in order to get it right. You can begin by just saying, God, search my heart, as he says in one, Psalm 139, verse 24, and see if there's any wicked way in me. And so that's where we begin to approach. I, 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 quite honestly, before I get up and preach a message, most of the time I'm praying that very prayer saying, God, don't let this be of me. Uh, give me a heart that's wholly surrendered to you, that the motives of what I share be pure. Don't let me add any of my own uh, pet peeves or things like that. And it just simply says, I just want to represent God as honestly and truthfully and accurately as I possibly can. That's why, secondly, he says that it's also peace-loving. It pursues peace. It doesn't look for conflict. It isn't looking for a fight. Angry people are looking for people to get into a hustle with or a hassle with or a tussle with. Um, we're looking to pursue peace with people and to get along. And thirdly, he says it's considerate. It's focusing upon others. It's not just simply saying, how do I get what I want out of this? It's sitting down and saying, how 
what is also the, the need of this other person? Can I do something to help them and, and structure this in a way that's good for them? That fourthly says it's submissive. And in a way, what that means is it's collaborative. It doesn't just simply uh, go on its own without regard to anybody else, but it sets back and saying, can we work on this together? Can we share this project together? Uh, I find that in marriages that, uh, you know, where the husband is demanding that the wife submit to him, that's usually a relationship's in trouble because if a husband is loving his wife as Christ loved the church, she has no trouble submitting to him and working collaborative with him for a common goal, a common objective. And so being submissive really is this collaborative sense that we have. And then, and then next he says it's also full of mercy, which means it's willing to forgive other people when they make mistakes and, and mess up. That he says next that it's full of good fruit, that it, it, it becomes evident in, in what it brings forth in that relational dynamic or in that project, that activity. And then he says next that it's impartial, it's not biased, it's not dismissive or disregarding other people. It's not showing favoritism to another person, which is the only reason we do favoritism to certain people is because we want a reciprocity. We want, we expect that I'll do good to you and therefore you will do good to me. Jesus said all of our giving should be one way. We give not expecting anything in return. We just give because it's what God wants us to do. And so that impartiality means that we're not viewing it in terms of a quid pro quo. We're viewing it in terms of obedience to God. I'm doing this out of obedience to God that I might express his goodness to somebody else. And then finally, he says it's sincere. Uh, in other words, it's the opposite of being disingenuous. It's basically what we call ingenuous. Many people use those terms disingenuous and ingenuous as the same thing. They're, they're actually quite opposite because someone who is ingenuous is innocent in their motives, they're unsuspecting, and they're straightforward. That in other words, we're people who are just straightforward. What you see is what you get, that we're not trying to present ourselves as anything other than what we are. I tell my staff and, and other people many times that our goal is to, to be authentic, not authentically bad, but to be authentically Christ-like, authentically committed to his agenda. And he tells us the final thing he says in verse 18, that if we really uh, let these benchmarks be the thing that we're, we're really reaching towards, he says, we will become peacemakers who sow in peace and raise a harvest of righteousness. This is a this is a steep hill I understand and that's why it can't be accomplished in a casual or indirect way. If we want to be people who live wisely and see the benefits of living wisely, we have to commit ourselves to the path of wisdom. That's what we've been talking about this week and I hope that it has helped to stir some things in your life that will begin moving you further down that pathway that the hope that one day that other people will look at you and say, you're a man or you're a woman who has lived wisely, and I would like to imitate that. Well, again, uh, we're at the end of the week, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Even though I've been a little bit lengthy, I hope these have been a benefit to you. Uh, I know they speak to me as I speak them to you. So God bless and go in his grace.